So good morning, and here I am with Dave. And also, when you will be viewing this, it will be my 60th birthday on the day, August 20th. And I'll be in San Francisco, hopefully having, I, I think uh, you can get clam chowder in a sourdough bowl or something, right? You'll probably get anything so <laughs> yeah. <right> there. That's <laughs> true enough. <laughs> Anyway, it's a, it's a pleasure to uh, do these little videos. We've, we're having three Sundays away from the church, as you know, and, uh, but each week we'll have a YouTube for you to watch, and uh, each week we're going to have a conversation with one of our three new elders and hear a bit of their story, and uh, then we'll watch a bit of a worship service, and I'll talk to you about that at the end. So Dave, you are, have been a, an elder within this congregation for many years. But as you know, sometimes people are on the session and sometimes they are not. We call them sustaining elders. And Dave is one of the ones who has just come back on the session and wondered if you wanted to talk a bit about, um, I guess, how, how you have a sense of calling back to the session and what you see as uh, what you are gonna be able to uh, offer and be part of in the church right now. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to come back on the session, although it almost felt that I was never off the session because I've been around the church since yep. the 1990s. So, yep. uh, um, But it's an exciting time in the church. I think I've mentioned to a few people around here that there's a, I find that there's a new vibe going on. I felt once everybody started coming back into worship at the church, um, it made a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, you know, the live stream and the online has sure. been great. Yeah. It's been a great bridge into getting back, but yeah. I felt that Holy Week was a really mm. big turning point in the mm -hmm. church. I felt mm -hmm. that there, there was a renewed energy. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of new members are coming and okay. coming every week. The attendance has been great during the summer. Yeah. And I think with the redevelopment project uh, coming on board and seeing that into fruition and seeing where the church goes through that process and, uh, and after that process is something that's, that's tremendously exciting. Yeah, I think, and as you say, Dave, you've been part of the congregation for a long time and it really is, it's a strong group of people. It has a, a strong sense of fellowship, a strong sense of wanting to be part of this community. And so it is exciting, and, and we have a lot to, to navigate as we go forward. I'm really grateful to have you part of this. Well, it's a pleasure to be able to support you. Yeah. The, yeah. the first time we met, I, I think I asked you if I could give you a hug. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you said it was okay. So I gave you a big hug, and I said, you're exactly what we need here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next week I said, you're not going anywhere. Mm. <laughs> and uh, mm, 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 it's, mm. you've been great for the church. Mm. Uh, you've been great for this congregation. Mm. And I'm so thankful that you're staying on for a little longer than you had planned. Yeah, oh, thanks, Dave. Well, it's great for me too. And especially as I am turning 60 or 60 today, uh, you do find yourself thinking about uh, your life a little bit and uh, I really do I feel very grateful also to be here and to be with you and uh, with a great group of people um, that leads me I guess to talk I was remembering that day when when Dave said you're not leaving and that sometimes is something that is said when you come to a new church and I thought oh yeah yeah I'll be leaving and uh, but it turns out you maybe were uh, on the pulse of the Holy Spirit and uh, I had quite a time though coming to that decision and uh, <clears throat> as you will see in this service that I've chosen to share snippets of today from uh, that back in uh, the spring of 2020 this sermon was preached and uh, as I came to terms with being open to maybe a new call and of course now we've been delayed another three years at that point we thought well maybe i'll be here for five years and it's been obviously slow because of post covid and challenges in building but uh, it could be you know that we're having a, a retirement party you know in five years yeah. <laughs> who knew it's very um it's humbling to walk in god's footsteps and Absolutely. i'm really glad to well, with you. you know, as I look back on my career in business, mm. I've always 
I, I've never been one to kind of say this is what I want to do. I've kind of been yeah. led, and uh, yeah. as you and I have talked, um, we talk about coincidences, mm -hmm. and every time <laughs> something happens mm -hmm. where we feel that God has intervened, uh, Carol and I look at look at each uh, uh, each other and say, "Oh, that was a coincidence." Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's no coincidence yeah. that. Uh, that you've been, that you were called here, and that uh, you're staying here for a longer period of time than yeah. uh, than you had expected. Yeah. So, so on we go. On we go. Into '61. Yes. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Everything will be fine. Yeah. I come to the garden. Good morning, everybody. We're going to sing, just like Carolyn said, one more step along the world I go. One more step along the world I go. One more step along the world I go. From the old things to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. And it's from the old I travel to the new. Through the bad and good, keep me traveling the way I should. Where I see no way to go, you'll be telling me the way I know. And it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. Give me courage when the world is rough. Loving though the world is tough, leap and sing it all I do. Keep me traveling along with you, and it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. It's on each of us, and indeed for our church, may our integrity be a gift to the world. And may the Spirit of God be with us as we each call upon your name, O Lord, by night, as we seek you, God of wonders, to guide our steps. in your holy name, Lord of heaven and earth. Amen. Peter had a vision about doing things very differently. Hear the word of God as it's recorded in the 11th chapter of Acts. Now the apostles and believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went back to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? 
And then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. And as I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. And I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, and then everything was pulled back up to heaven. And at that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were staying. And the Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house who told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house, saying, Send to Joppa, and bring Simon, who is called Peter, and he will give a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And then I began to speak, and as I spoke, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had fallen upon us in the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? And when the people in Jerusalem heard Peter share all this, they were silenced and they praised God saying, then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts that are now in each of our hearts, wherever we may be, may they have integrity and be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. A young 18-year-old was sort of seeing a young man whenever he came to town to visit his brother. They shared some conversations, group picnics, and she had asked him to take her to her grade 12 prom as part of a group. One Sunday later in the summer, he came to town to visit his brother and showed up at worship with a friend. After church, the young 18-year-old came home for lunch to discover that her mom had invited some of the youth group along with her young man, his brother, and his friend to come for lunch. The young man smiled broadly from the dinner table where he was sitting with her family when she walked in the back door and then proudly introduced them to the friend he'd brought to church that no one had ever met. And he introduced her as his girlfriend. Oh, you could almost picture the heart of the 18-year-old breaking in two, just about as fast as the color of embarrassment was rising to her cheeks as people in her family looked at her with questioning eyes. Making a hasty exit through the kitchen, she went out the front door and began to walk. Tears streaming down her face, she finally wound up sitting in a field along a concession road, and she cried and cried, almost in a crying jag asking God why had this happened, and wondering if people in her family would think she was pathetic, seeming to have pretended to have a boyfriend, and even wondering now in her own heart if she'd made it up. Feeling very alone and humiliated and broken, she sat and sat maybe a couple of hours. She wondered how she could ever go home and face everyone. And as she sat, along came a sparrow-type bird, that sat on a post nearby and began to sing. And eventually the young woman became aware of the bird and began to listen, and somehow it seemed to be singing to her. And then as it kept singing for longer than a normal bird song, it seemed to be saying, her her soul heard these words, I think you are special. I came to sing just for you, because God loves you, loves you so much. 
Once she began to listen and, and feel that message, the little bird flew along to the next fence post and then back to the closer post and then on to the next post, beckoning her to follow. And intrigued by the bird and thinking less and less about the events at lunch and weary from a good cry, finally she got up and walked to the next post while the little bird patiently perched until she got close enough to it that it would fly down a few more fence posts down the road, singing away whenever it landed. She continued to follow this bird down the concession and along some back streets. She didn't want to leave this creature that seemed to be so comforting. And then all of a sudden she clued into her surroundings and noticed the bird had just flown to the back gate in the alley behind her parents' home. She walked up to the gate and she was close enough almost to touch the bird. And then with a final chirp, it took flight and went way up into the sky. The woman shielded her eyes from the sun as she watched the bird fly till she couldn't see it anymore. And with renewed courage and a deep sense of God's love for her, she put her hand on the latch and opened the back gate and took the next step in her life, deeply moved and knowing God's love. But graduates, all of us today listening and worshiping can tell you that as we trust God, we will learn the path on which we are to walk. God loves you and will guide you, loves you so much and wants to grant the desires of your heart as you're figuring it all out. I asked two elders in our church to talk about how they came upon their careers, and I want to quote their words to you. First of all, from Anne Brockenshire. She writes, most of us have a call story, a moment or moments when we realize that our place in the line of disciples behind Jesus, a call that perhaps leads to baptism or confirmation, possibly to ordination as an elder, a call to follow a career choice or schooling or to take a break and refocus our life, a call that leads us to say yes to serving our community. One of the hardest aspects of a call today is discernment. There are times when we hear a call and we're not sure whether the voice we hear is Jesus' voice or the voice of culture or a tiny little voice in our own head. I suggest you pray about it and take your time. Really think about who you are and what God is calling you to be. My call, I had always thought I wanted to be a teacher or perhaps a librarian, probably right up until my last year of high school. But then walking through the mall one day, I clearly remember hearing a voice that called me to be a nurse. I was walking by a person in a motorized wheelchair who required additional help of an attendant. I smiled and nodded and kept walking past the shops. But as I walked by, I stopped and looked behind me again as the wheelchair disappeared, and I heard a voice in my head. I knew at that instant I was called to be a nurse. The call was urgent, and it came unexpectedly, and there were no detailed instructions, but the call changed my whole life. Dave Murdoch told me this about his own calling. He writes, I graduated from university with a Bachelor of Commerce and I immediately joined the Hudson Bay Company. This didn't seem like a particularly noble profession, selling stuff to people, some of which was needed and some of which was not. It felt like I just stumbled into this career. It never occurred to me that this was part of God's plan. As a young guy, I didn't have the inclination or take the time to observe the signs that God gave me. But as I got older, I began to notice and look for God's message to me. These events also caused me then to take time to reflect back on my career and only to discover that there were so many aha moments along my journey. Early in my career, I discovered that it wasn't about being a subject matter expert. The Hudson Bay Company moved me from job to job every six to nine months, certainly not enough time to acquire a deep understanding of the commodity I was responsible for. This was all about leadership. And I felt that my employer was asking me to turn around a business and that God was asking me to do it while making a difference in people's lives. 
Certainly my company would have been happy with simply driving the business result, but in my mind, it had to start with the people that I was leading and supporting. I was, in fact, an outlier. Most of the organizations that I worked in simply measured financial results. Our teams tended to become microcultures within the companies that I worked for, and people tended to be happy and engaged, and others wanted to join our team, and the business results thrived. Over the course of 35 plus years, there are countless stories that can be told as evidence of God's direction in my life and to my career. To this day, I hold the personal relationships that I developed with those that worked for me and around me as the most precious part of my working life. I have been truly blessed." End of quote. Hmm. Sometimes God has changes in store for us in life. But as for Dave and for Anne, when we listen to God's voice inside us, we will know what path to take and how to take it. God will help us. God will show us. For my part, I've understood for many years now, since 1997, really even before that, that my calling was to help churches in times of their acute need. And then usually after two years, although the first one was five years, then it was obviously time for me to go off to the next place. Hmm. Well, sometimes God surprises us. Last summer, I found myself wondering if God was wanting me to do something different than this. Show me something new. Just like Peter learned in his vision that God was changing up how things had always been. And for Peter, he was telling them to eat new meats, which really meant welcome new people, welcome all people to Jesus' table. God had a new plan, and Peter, he needed to figure it out. So. Then, in October, I took some intentional time to spend with God and in the scripture discerning. I told you about that the Sunday before I went. I think it was the Sunday Rhodes was preaching about trains. I told you I was going to go and read some favorite passages of scripture and just let God speak to me through them, a sort of intentional discernment style. I was going because I was trying to understand this urging this stirring that I was feeling inside, this new feeling of not sensing the need to go. Hmm. I found myself reading the story in Acts 11 that we have just read while I sat next to a Muskoka lake. I had just stumbled upon this passage that afternoon as I'd first chosen to read a favorite passage of mine from Acts 3 about Peter and John at the temple gate. So I kind of was flipping on through Acts, you know how you do. And I read about this Greek Cornelius and his faith. And then I read about Peter seeing things in a new way. And I read about Peter baptizing Cornelius and then going home to the Jewish Christians and then he had some splaining to do as he'd done this really new thing by baptizing a Greek. And then I was rocked to my very soul when I read the next verse. I read it and it felt like God was just about hitting me over the head with a message and I found myself weeping from my toes. Peter explained himself to everyone by saying this, who was I to hinder the plans of God? Whoa, Carolyn. Who am I indeed? My carefully thought out plan maybe isn't God's plan. And just to drive the point home, as I closed my eyes then in prayer, asking if I could just be open to God, open to the possibility that I wasn't yet done in Trafalgar, and I just closed my eyes, and then after a bit I I opened my eyes and I saw that not one, not two, not three, but four dragonflies had alighted near me. Two of them were on my arm. Dragonflies are a powerful symbol, a wonder for me. (sighs) Sometimes God has surprises in store for us. Ever since October, things have continued to happen to make it more and more clear to me. As the session asked me in November to stay another year, as I've been now privileged, such a privilege to be your minister in this pandemic time, to grow closer together, 
and know you in deeper ways through this crisis. And of course, now in May, it's become all the more apparent why I am to stay here longer. Do you know that God loves you like that? We'll be with you and we'll help show you the way if you will just be open and ask. When we believe this as individuals, and if we can believe this as a congregation, what hope there is, what things we can do for God, oh, the places we could go. Ah, the, you saw this, you wondered what this was doing here. This book is a graduation address by Dr. Seuss. My mom gave it to me when I was ordained and began my ministry. And it's often been an inspiration. If you haven't read it, you surely should. I'll read you just a few pages that I find meaningful. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far and face up to your problems, whatever they are. And you will succeed, yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarter percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. So be your name, Buxbum or Bixby, or Burr, or Mordecai Ali Mick Trafalgar. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Oh, the places we could go. We just need to say, here I am, Lord. And I want to tell you today, God will be with us all, each one of you watching, and with the congregation of Trafalgar Presbyterian Church. God loves us and will never leave us. I believe that in my heart for you, for me, and for the church, and for the world. And you know how I know? Well, a long time ago, a little bird told me. I the Lord and so. Here it is, August 20th, 2023, 60 years old, and I'm still listening and watching for those birds and dragonflies. As one more step along the world I go, and how glad I am to be walking it with you. For blessed are we, rejoice and be glad, for we are the children of God. 
May the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love today and forevermore. Amen.